Advent and welcome to Framlingham, the town I grew up in, which has also been voted one of the best towns to live in in the UK. Philip and I are heading out into town to do a spot of festive shopping. It is the prettiest village. It was the nicest place to go to school and to grow up. And it's really lovely being back here around Christmas. It makes me feel specially Christmassy, being where I spent so many childhood Decembers. Welcome to Philip Christmas Heaven. It wouldn't be Christmas without visiting an antique shop. I think it's Richmond, isn't it? There we go. How do you do that? <laughs> Seriously? Actually, we should probably get this one, because the one we've got uh, has got a little crack in it. Oh no! I think Natalie would like to replace the one that we've bought. If it's got a crack and we're using it for the breakfast, we should replace it. Oh, there's lots of... Beer. Oh my goodness, another one of the bowls! There's one of the beautiful bowls we use in the kitchen. We have three of these and I use them every time I cook. I don't think we need a fourth, but they are so gorgeous. I've never seen this one before, Philip. Copeland, isn't it beautiful? That's the plate that I really like. Yeah, but look at the shape I of it as well. It's nice. I really like this one. Have you ever seen the Spode soup bowls? They're beautiful. If I lived in a house where six would be enough, I'd be very tempted. But there are 150 for the six, and, well, there's never just six of us, very rarely. So we won't be taking those home. There is an excellent collection of Christmas dinosaurs, because what Christmas isn't complete without a Christmas T-Rex. Have you ever I thought on Christmas Day, the problem is there's no Brontosaurus? This postbox is beautiful. Doesn't it make you think of wonderful Christmas cards coming through the post? I think we should get this one for Emery. <laughs> it's really nice. What do you think? Yeah. Maybe for your mother? Oh my goodness. I think my mother would love that. A little early Christmas present for her. Oh, do you see the goblet I see? I've never seen anything like it. It's like a chalice. I wonder what it was for. Let's have a little look. Gold and pale green goblet. Ten pounds. Where is that from? Doesn't even say it. I absolutely love it. I think it's beautiful. Oh, I think Philip's going to like these. So pretty with the gold and the blue. It's actually quite festive. I'm into blue Christmassy things today. I think because I'm wearing my blue winter coat. Oh, this is a. I literally just said you would like that. It's beautiful. I knew you'd love it. It's got Philip written all over it. Spood. How amazing oh, is that? Love them all that is the Christmas goblet to end all cider. Christmas goblets, isn't it? Not marked nice. at all. I think it's. I've never seen anything like it. I think it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. It goes with your coat as well. Do you see how important it is to have a goblet that matches your coat at Christmas for the mulled wine? You're only finding it out now? I don't know. I haven't lived until this point, darling. <laughs> oh, you're going to be here for hours. I'm going to go look at no, the books. I, I don't think so. I think I'll, I'll make my decision pretty quickly. <laughs> Last time we came here, um, I'm just going to, you know, have my tea. <laughs> Last time we came here, uh, the shop was not here. It was in a different part yes, of the town. Yes, it's moved. And I bought two amazing books on porcelain from, like, 1830 or something. So I think I have a little... You take your tea with you? I think so, yes, yes, yes. It's very warm, I guess. I have found your Bible. Investing <laughs> in pottery and That's porcelain. my life's motto, darling. Investing. Quite. Hugo is quite right, it's investing. It's two pounds. It's not a huge investment, is what we're saying. Well, it's an outlay, <laughs> and it will start off, I suspect, quite a lot of other problematic purchases <laughs> afterwards. Mm. There's a companion book. Investing in Georgian glass. It's actually more of an investment than the other. It's three pounds. And we don't collect Georgian glass. Not yet. You are a worry. I love that. It's the edging that I love so much. I love it. It looks, it looks like a curtain. Have you seen? It's so pretty. They're sitting in a lovely park with an island. I wonder if the island at Laland will have a gazebo like that on it. Seems unlikely. I absolutely love it. I think it's so beautiful. Look, it is beautiful. But okay, so I've just noticed some old repairs and a couple of cracks on, on some pieces. Like, for example, this is very cleverly done. It's actually didn't really see nicely it first. done, yeah. See? That's the one that's correct. Yeah. And there's also just a few... There's a few too many cracks for us to, I'm just, yeah, pass it on on Jarvis Jansen. But if anyone is interested, my, I would have used it for myself for quite a long time. I think before passing it on, we don't need personally another tea set. Really, we do I feel like need we a porcelain goblet. 
If anyone lives near Framlingham and they're interested, we're in the Majestic Hair Antiques Shop in Framlingham and it is still available here and it is really very so beautiful. Pretty. Now I'm heading back to Mummy's down this adorable little alleyway. Mummy's house is just on the other side. I don't recognize you all your things. All right, let's go ahead and see Mummy again. Right, darling. I think it's fair to say that Mummy and Jerry's homes are the most colorful in Framlingham. We may have got you a little something in town. Well, we won't be together at Christmas. So I'm showering you in little presents up until the day. Christmas. It's only a little one, you'll see it's tiny. I, I know, beloved you one. certainly didn't need this. But I just oh, thought just it's lovely. very you and it would go so well here. Look at, on it's the so chair that you're on. I love it actually. These are a bit old now. Yeah, I got you those as well years ago. Yes, didn't years, I? Ago. years Oh, look. That's so there much There you go, leveled up. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Philip, that looks really lovely. It is nice. It is, it is. It's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. When I was an old boy, I used to have one. It is actually like a chalice. Uh, yes, I was a... going to say it looks like a chalice. Yeah, no, but it shows you all the heathens and it shows you the real church war. You can, it's heavy. I know, it feels yeah, solid. Yeah, it feels, it's the sort oh, of thing Scottish one. men used to drink. Yeah. Where the men are men and the sheep are nervous. <laughs> <laughs> We think it's probably French. I'm guessing porcelain de Paris, so Paris porcelain. Oh, yes. The blue is The blue uh, is lovely. Yeah. And I'm guessing 1860s because of the chalice mm. that makes you think sure. neo-Gothic. You think possibly a tiny bit of... Could be 1830s, but between that, yes, I'd say. It's yeah. but sure. I'm going to try and look it up. See Did you get them in France? Yes. In time, I'll yeah. take it back again. <laughs> <laughs> you see okay. you coming. Something unprecedented is happening. She's brought out her collection of Georgian glass that she's so protective of that I haven't seen it for over a decade as it's been hidden away. They're handmade and you can see where they came off the glass blower's stick on the base. Yeah, it's still yeah. rough. Oh, they must have talked about um, going to that new place in America. They call it <laughs> America. This is just it's amazing, it's absolutely amazing. Look at the proportion mm. of the cup compared to the stem, to, well, to the foot. And they're all different. Look, the size difference in the pair. They're completely different to one another. Exactly. It's delightful. I love jugs. I know you do. I what is, You have a thing about jugs. But I am very restrained, you know. Does she want a jug? Is this what's going on? I think but, so. But between <laughs> wanting a jug and owning a jug. She very much big, wants big, the jug. Difference Shall we do a swap? That one can be yours. Yes. If I can have the Asiatic pheasant that you've got, the tiny one. It's like listening to Monopoly. Go and show it to me and I will consider. <laughs> <laughs> She's checking it, checking it, making sure you're not giving her a dud. Mm. Ah, that's my favourite. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah you are not in luck. It's my favourite. You want three hotels and Bond Street. No, <laughs> Who can have it? Thank you. you actually got the more valuable jug. Yes, you do. This is 19th century and it's a very I nice one. A jug. No, no, no. That is for you but now, Mummy. I've already got jugs here. But but, not anymore. <laughs> no, 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 you'll be surprised. This is only a small abode. I cannot have to mention it. Mm, small abode. Shall I just show everyone the small abode? Don't. <laughs> it's the best because you've arrived. Oh, that's why. Small. I will actually show everybody my bedroom, which I never use because it's got a single bed. And we only had it built because you you had a tantrum. Of course I had a tantrum, Mummy. You and Daddy bought a one-bedroom house. Yes. What were you thinking? Jerry already lived next door. He was fine. Were you? I was 20. 29. <laughs> yeah. No, Mummy, you have a child. So we decided, okay, we'll have a mezzanine. And Thank she you. can have a bed. And then I stopped having a tantrum. Thank and then you. she stopped coming. <laughs> <laughs> I got a fiancé. Here's the mezzanine. Also, Philip and I wouldn't get that much privacy, would we? Really? Hello, everyone. <laughs> Just one That's all right, you're doing a great job of the song, Gerald. Looks as though Mummy's using it as a drying rack up here. But this is my bedroom. Well, it's looking a bit creepier than usual because Mummy's covered the bed with a sheet and it's unmade. But you get the general gist. It's got the prettiest wallpaper and then the bath is in the room. Doesn't always have a bra drying on it. And then the loo is in here. 
I love it here. I really think it's just the most charming mezzanine, but Philip and I can't fit into that bed. And as I said, there's a slight lack of privacy. Who said that? <laughs> How's it going, Philip? Have you discovered anything about the glasses? Yeah. What is a deceptive ball? Look at the two mummy's got her glasses on. She means swell, business. Yes. Plain line, bows and flowers. It's like the antique roadshow. Whilst they're pouring over the glasses, I'm going to pour myself some tea in the porcelain chalice. Armed with my new favourite cup of tea, I've come over to find that something quite complex appears to be going on. We have persuaded Mummy to get Christmas decorations out already. That, ladies and gentlemen, that's the first Christmas miracle you will see this year. The Virgin Mary. This is the old nativity scene. I remember my father buying it years ago. And mummy has it here, and we've discovered that one of the wise men was smashed into, what, six pieces? Yeah. So Philip is trying to glue him back together again at the moment. And it means that the gap left by our advent calendars will be filled by the nativity, which I love. These we bought, but all of the birds were made in the craft sessions by our residents in the nursing home. Mm -hmm. And we've kept them, we bring them out at yeah. Christmas every year to remind us of the residents. It's maybe not normal to have a nativity surrounded by birds rather than an ox and an ass, but you know, mm -hmm. all things are possible. How are you getting on with that? Uh, none of the glue's worked, so it's still a tick. <laughs> Just to get him through the season. Yeah. I've set up the nativity, Mummy. We have the three wise men arriving from the east, Jerry assures me, that way is east. Here we have the Holy Family with the angel Gabriel in the background. And the shepherd, well, we've lost his sheep, but we have birds. Well, they do call it a flock, so it sort of works. Isn't it lovely, my nativity? It is, darling. Yes, and that is basically the most you will allow in terms of Christmas decorations. That's what Christmas is about. So that's it. There you, you go, think, you've got there's it. There's nothing else to Christmas but that. Have the most fabulous Christmas, the pair of you. Thank you, my darling. Well, it's time for us to go, and I'm so sad because I won't see Mummy and Percy again until March. We'll all be there in March, won't we, Gerald? Marching. You're marching, marching to... I think marching, he's marching to Christmas. Marching, it's hard to know. Oh, he's marching to March. Okay, that, that's oh, good. <laughs> Have a very safe journey. Thank you, my darling. I love you so much. I love you. More. You I'm seeing next week, thank goodness. Yes! <laughs> yes! Christmas will continue at La Land. You know, they're everybody's leaving this party time. <laughs> Anybody watching wants to come to a party in Framlingham. House I've got, party. I've got an empty. And he's got a whole drinks cabinet to get through. Yeah. <laughs> Philip and I are heading off now. We are going to Brighton for the next stage of our Advent adventure. So tomorrow, join us for a typical British seaside Christmas. Bye darlings, miss you so much. Bye. Love you all.